The trip operon is an example of a repressible system, meaning that the operon is automatically turned on unless a repressor becomes active and turns it off. Let's examine how this works. In this system, the repressor protein encoded by the R gene is always expressed. In the absence of tryptophan, the repressor protein is inactive and cannot occupy the operator side of the trip operon. When the operator side is unoccupied, RNA polymerase can attach to the operon's promoter region, indicated by P sub TRP, and begin transcription. The structural genes of the trip operon are labeled E, D, C, B, and A. RNA polymerase transcribes these genes, producing an mRNA transcript. Translation of the mRNA transcript produces five enzymes that participate in a metabolic pathway that synthesizes tryptophan. Each enzyme catalyzes a different step in the pathway. With these enzymes and with the necessary raw materials, the cell synthesizes tryptophan. When the levels of tryptophan exceed the needs of the cell, tryptophan molecules act as co-repressors of the trip operon. Tryptophan binds to the trip repressor protein, causing a conformational change that converts the repressor from an inactive to an active form. The conformational change allows the repressor to bind to the operator side of the operon. The repressor acts as a roadblock, preventing RNA polymerase from transcribing the structural genes. The trip operon is repressed. The enzymes eventually degrade and are not remade, so the cell ceases to make tryptophan. When the cell uses up its supply of tryptophan, the repressor loses its co-repressor and becomes inactive again. The repressor falls off the operator site and thereby allows RNA polymerase to initiate transcription again.